This video is brought to you by SteelSeries, where you can get all your gaming hardware for a better price and a better quality. Buy now at SteelSeries.com Hello everybody, welcome to a tutorial series in Unity 3D where we're going to be looking at different things to do. For this episode we're going to be looking at uh, making a little, a few horror scripts. So we're going to have a look at a torch script, uh, building a simple level, and maybe some ideas of things that you could include in a horror game to create your first little horror indie game. Now let's get started on this. So uh, first things first, we're going to want to create a terrain. So you go terrain, create terrain. Actually, for this tutorial, I'm going to show you the first. Uh, ah, show you one thing first. So you create a cube. Now I'll put a link in the description to the person I actually learned this from. But I'm going to show you how to basically do walls and floors. So if you want to set this to, whoops, 0 0.2, and you set these to about 5 and 5, we're going to create a level out of these squares. Now these will basically hold our textures and that, and be the floor for uh, the, for the game. If I drag a uh, first person controller onto here, you'll kind of see actually what size this is. The character is two meters high. This is five. Uh, well, I, I think it's two meters. I don't know. Yeah, why? Two point three. I don't know. I don't think that's the actual height. Um, right. So this is basic idea of that right so with this if you uh, control c uh control v which is copy and paste or you can obviously right click copy paste whatever you like to do if you hold v this little icon will go to the nearest corner your mouse is at and i'm hoping you can see my mouse if you click on that specific corner the little box there should go yellow you can actually drag it around to each corner so they will match perfectly so there's no need to kind of go uh, my close and my close or like change the stuff up here you will actually just snap it together there we go so this is now our sort of little bit of a floor you can actually sort of you can copy both of them sort of go do that and then you've got like a four bit there and what you can do now is if you do that and just change the rotation there to minus 90 Oh no, that was meant to copy. I forgot to copy there. Do do do. Control C V. Actually, you can name all these ones. Wall, wall cube. You can change all these ones to floor. There we go. So just so you know what's what. If you change all these to minus ninety, and then you press W on your keyboard to get this back up. Actually, that's another thing. Uh, w is to get this up, E is to get the rotation, and R is to do the scaling. In Blender, it's S for the scaling, I think. Uh, just a little tip there if you're planning on using Blender. Uh, now, uh, if I move this up, you can kind of see this will go down here. You basically, you can decide where you want these. You can either have them inside of the floor cube, or you can have them on the outside, depending on the size you want for a corridor, let's say. Um, I tend to leave them like this only because I don't tend to have the corridors um, that big because actually I don't know for some reason you'll be surprised at how much this adds when you have it on both sides so um, I kind of try and make this as small as possible now the, the, the height of this won't be this so you haven't got a problem uh, with this uh, being that high but for now those walls have actually been put there and you can if I do this again, no, it's a little, yeah, control C and V. Uh, if I do that again, and I copy, well, I drag from V to this one. So basically, you got, you got to kind of predict the corner you're going to go to. So if I want to go to this corner down here, I'd pick the corner here, because it would then go straight through. Like so. Currently, if we have a look at the game, it's going to look like one giant texture, and it's going to look really weird. We're going to want to quickly fix this. Now, if you select all your floor textures, for now I haven't imported any, but you can kind of get a carpet texture or something like that. I don't know if we've actually got one. You can go to materials. Uh, actually, no, maybe not. Uh, if you go to standard assets and you go to. Da, da, da. Maybe not. Okay, let's just uh, get grass texture. Grass. 
So if we just drag these on, so you can literally just drag it to these. This is like really bad, but I'm just going to drag these for this. So now if I do this view, you've actually got the grass texture, it's a bit dark, and then you've got these two wall textures, which are just solid, a solid texture. So for those, we're going to go, uh, have we got a texture for text? Our oh, textures, here we go, no, maybe not. I thought there were more actually on Unity. I've been using Unity Pro, so it's kind of includes more as far as I know. Textures. Uh, textures. Textures. Ah. Maybe not. Uh, wall. Meh. Uh, dirt. Okay, so for the walls, we're going to have this good dirt. Now uh, this is, um, you can type in dr, dir for dirt, or you can find the good, good dirt, whatever. Basically you can get whatever text you want, you just import it in, which is like drag and drop into the assets folder there. Uh, now if we do this view, which is if you press the light icon and that, you see that we've got, oh look, we've got wall textures and a floor texture. This is still like this. So what we're going to want to do is create the torch. But to do this we're going to, first of all, Get the first person controller and drag that in, like so. You also probably just want to position the player just above. Make sure the player doesn't isn't spawn like this, otherwise the game will not work and the player will just fall straight through. You want to make sure that if you don't actually want your player to see that you kind of like fall from a high like up here to into the game, you may just want to do something like that until you can see. The player is definitely visibly above the ground, and there'll be only a tiny little drop. Now, if we play the game, if I maximize this and hit play, we should see that. It's a little bit slow, there we go. Should see that you're in the game, you've got the, the textures here, and there's actually no clipping of textures, it's all one solid wall. You could probably do, actually, no, you couldn't, unless you did some texture things in the tiling, like to create this kind of effect on one straight thing, uh, one straight uh, cube, but I tend to think it's better to do this because then if you want to put like a corridor, or another corridor going this way or a door here, then you can go and do that. You just have to take out that one thing instead of taking out a whole door or a whole wall thing. Right, okay, so actually if you really wanted to, you can put this floor on the ceiling as well which is what I'm going to do now because for some reason I want to. Oops, shots TV. There we go. It's now on the ceiling as well. I suppose you could change that to good dirt. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of relying on you to get your textures, but I didn't really just want to go into the internet and get textures that I don't own. I know you probably use them. In, people probably use them. In, oops, sorry about that. Uh, you probably use them in games, but still, it's kind of, yeah. Uh, I don't know why. You can, but... I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's carry on. So now what you want to do is have we got torch? We do not have a torch in here. What we're going to do is you can get a torch model online, but for this tutorial, if you press F, you'll focus on here on the character, the player. If you create a capsule, not a capsule, I mean, I mean a game object, create other a cylinder. If you rotate it to 90, you drag it across, you create it to about 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, then all you want to do is extend the length to about 3, not uh, 0 0.4, or 3, 3. And then I'm going to get this standard and increase it to 0 0.3, or actually 0 0.25, to 5, and you want to put this to 0 0.1. And then what you can do is try and center it the best you can onto this. So basically you'll get a, a weird looking torch effect. Now I don't think... Uh, it's like a black texture so what I'm going to do is if I just put handle inside of that that is now the torch for the character 
You can also want to work out where the torch will go in the player's view. It tends to be about there. It will look weird on this. It will probably be better in game. So if you actually attach this to the main camera, this will travel with the main camera and there will be a torch thing there. Actually, this kind of helps. You can kind of see that there. So if you grab the torch and you move it in a bit, and then maybe you can add a little bit of rotation, kind of line it up with that wall. If you look at now, you've got a torch on here. But look, it just goes through here. But we've also got no light. So what we can do now is this torch here is attached to this camera. We duplicate this camera. And on this camera, actually the first camera, we delete that. The cylinder, we're going to create a new layer. So you go to add layer. Uh, you can put in user layer 8. You can call this torch and then what you do is you also on the camera f the cylinder is now in you do uh, culling mask and you put nothing and you put culling mask and you put torch then you do clear flags depth only also on this camera you don't do pers you do instead of everything you don't show the torch now what should happen is these are now all one uh, on the second camera you've got you put the depth to one and then when you play oh why is that still continued duh, duh, duh. this one is still showing it shouldn't be showing torch ah because the cylinder hasn't been put to the torch layer you change the children of it you go back to this camera, you hit play, and now it no longer goes through the wall. We've got this little clipping glitch here. So if you go to both cameras and you go to the 0 0.1 on the clipping planes, that will make it so that you don't clip through the walls like that, and it should be relatively good for clipping. The only thing with this uh, torch thing is that you may think, oh, when I put the light on, I'll have to make sure it's also on that layer. No, because if you do that, the torch light will not work. So what you want to do is go to your cylinder, press F to focus on it, and do Game Object, Create Other, Spotlight. Now this is going to create the light effect here. You're going to want to change the rotation of the Y, not to 90. The rotation of the Z, not to 90. Why is that gone weird? Okay. Uh, set it back to zero. Hmm. The X to zero. Now, if I attach this to the torch, sort of put it in front of it, so make sure it comes out of the torch. Oops. Somewhere in the middle. Now, if I actually put this onto the this main camera. And I want to put it in the normal layer. If I hit play now, this will show a weird torture effect. It doesn't look the best. It's kind of really weird and it goes really quickly. The way you can fix that is by changing the camera's perspective to 100. Also this camera, so that it matches. If you do 100. Oh, this kind of gives you a bit more depth. So you can actually now move the torch and the spotlight back a bit. It'll give you a bit of a better perspective of the game. So it makes everything look a little better. But you can see this kind of light isn't that good. So what we can do is, uh, you don't have to put that the depth to 100, it kind of gives you a bit more immersion into the game. If you change it to probably any more than 100 it's kind of getting a bit weird. I mean 100 is kind of Oculus Rift levels as far as I know. So uh, you kind of think beyond that, it's going to be a little bit weird because you're not through the desktop computer unless you're on like a whole monitor set up around you. You're not really in 360 degree camera perspective because I don't think that's possible in Unity anyway. Uh, actually, wh what is the 180? But we're sticking with the 100. Okay, so the spotlight. What you can do is you can increase the size to about 75. And then you can add the range to 20. And then the cookie, 
which is basically what will, what will kind of show up as the torch texture or flashlight you can select either of these two flashlights I'm gonna go with standard flashlight now you reckon you'll probably recognize this from slender but there we go there is a little flashlight thing and it'll go into the wall it's kinda gonna do that but this is a simple flashlight so it's pretty good and you'll set up a little level here and yeah so you're probably wondering what should I include in my horror game well you probably know that you're gonna want jump scares now, I'm not going to cover jump scares in this episode, but it's maybe happen in a future episode if you guys want it. Uh, so, th here's my top few tips on making a horror game. Number one, make sure there's enough gameplay for the player to get immersed into the game and be like, right, okay, something's happening here, like, there's scares, I want to be terrified of this game, but I still want to be able to play it. So, you kind of want the player to be scared of the game, but yet still carry on playing it because it's fun and it's scary. Uh, the other tip is to have jump scares, but not too many. Don't just have jump scares, maybe have some sound scares and like different things, like maybe a chair flying across a room right in front of the player's face or something like that. You may also want to change the speed that the player walks at and the sensitivity of the mouse, only because if you've got a certain scene that's going to be activated by a collider and the player can move really quickly away from it they're not going to see it so you kind of want to maybe limit their mouse sensitivity down a bit and what I recommend doing is when you're creating the game just kind of each time you add something just make sure you play through that same thing just to make sure it actually works don't just add a thing and test to see if it works unless of course you're just testing to see if a jump scare is actually being activated by a trigger in that case then just carry on doing that but when you test the game make sure it works maybe get some friends to test because you're going to know what the jump scares are, so you may not be scared of it. I mean, that's happening with me with Resomnia. I'm not actually getting scared of the jump scares because there's basically nothing to be scared of because I know where everything is. But yeah, so that was my kind of tutorial. I know it was pretty bad, um, but at least you learned some things. And uh, yeah, that is like a, a home phone and a mobile phone going off there. Very unprofessional, but... Um, yeah, if you want to see more tutorials, it will be better next time. It's kind of like, I was, I'm a little bit annoyed that a few things uh, were kind of, kind of going wrong. So, um, but yeah, so uh, I will be better at next time's tutorial. I, I will still do one, I think. But just let me know what I should do. Uh, it could be from any type of game. Don't ask me for multiplayer. There are plenty of tutorials, and I don't like multiplayer, so don't ask. I know you're probably going to ask it in the comments now, but... When I'm better at it, then maybe, but whatever. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Uh, some pretty awesome people on here, actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, I'm like, I'm slowly going mental as I finish this video. Yeah. Okay, so don't forget to subscribe to this video. Don't forget to like it, share it with your friends, and become a game developer in a couple of tutorials go and look around the interwebs and youtubes and find videos so uh yes thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in another video goodbye